and welcome to the Young Filmmakers Project. I'm Orion Ludlow. For the next half hour, we're going to spotlight movies made entirely by Vancouver Public High School students. The school district offers a wide variety of career-oriented electives. Video production is offered at five high schools and a number of middle and elementary schools, too. While they learn the fundamentals of telling compelling stories using film and video, students are also learning high-level communication and project management skills. So we are joining you today from the studios here at Fort Vancouver High School. This is where teacher Andy Burhau teaches his kids all about uh, all the aspects of video production, from film and news to you know live productions. Our first film is from a couple of Mr. Burhau's students. They're freshmen. The film is called The Box, and what's incredible is it was made in less than 48 hours. I forgot something in the box, hold on. There's nothing in here, Andrew. Yes. We can go look, now that all the stuff is gone, we can like live in here and make a little house. Look. Yes, we should do that right after we get stuff out of the garage, because it's probably just all in there. Andrew. Get out of the box, Andrew. We have to be serious and... Oh, look, I found the stuff. It's all here. I found it. Come on. Miguel, come on. Get over here. Come on, there's like... Come on. Oh my gosh, Miguel. It worked. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> there's so many things we could do. I just don't see anything wrong. Miguel, do you not see? We're skipping months, literally months. I don't care. We you have to look all the stuff we can do with. It doesn't matter. Just because yes, you're getting free stuff doesn't mean you're supposed to. Skip. I'm going back no. in. No, Miguel. Are you kidding? If you skip that much time, there could be bad consequences, Miguel. No. Oh, he's gone. Where is everyone? Where's Andrew?
Miguel! What? Where have you been? It's been months! No, it hasn't. Have you not? Okay. You're never gonna believe this, Miguel. I'll explain it to you. Come here. This line represents time as we know it and all of reality. Now this line represent time spent in the box while going to different places. Now, when you travel to different places in the box, you don't just go to other destinations, you go to different periods of time. In a sense, it's a time machine. And Miguel, this line represents the altered version of reality that we know today. Everybody outside is gone. No one's left, and we don't know why. Obviously, something happened in between here and here to make it so me and you are the only people left on the planet now. The only way to reverse this is to start from where we are now and go all the way back and stop ourselves from ever using the box in the first place. The only question is, how do we go back? So what would happen now, Andrew? Well, I've been thinking about it, and if we destroy the box, one or two things can happen. Either it'll take us back to where we were right before we started using the box in the first place, or it'll create a universal paradox, pretty much kill our past selves, Universal collapsing on itself, all matter and life will not exist. And, uh, it's worth a shot, I guess. I, th I think it's totally worth it. We're gonna have to destroy the box. Yeah, I'll just put them in front. Right. Nice, nice. We totally got like everything sorted out. That was good. High five. Nice. Wait a minute. <laughs> we're we're fading away, Miguel. Yes. We changed the past. No, we can't fade now. We just saved everything. It's okay, Andrew. No. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Okay, we're here with Miguel and Andrew, the uh, two freshmen who made this movie. Great movie, guys. Um, I watched it last night. I thought it was really, really fun. You made it in 48 hours. Is What's the challenge there? Is that What's the hardest part of making a movie in 48 hours? Well, you know, it was kind of a crunch for time because we only had so long to come up with the idea and had to film it and edit it all. We ended up staying up late that night and editing till like, Midnight. How close did you come to, to uh, taking too long? Um, we kind of like goofed off a bit, but because we were having a great time making it. But there was some part where we got stuck because of the idea. Because we originally had a different idea, so we had to go back and make a new one. So how far into it had you, had you gone before you changed and went back to the, to, to the other idea? Like half, a, like five hours or... Three, maybe. 
We actually spent most of the first day developing the first idea and we did a little shooting and then towards the end we changed it and pretty much filmed all the second day and edited all the second day. Because our plot was, uh, idea was teleporting through the box and we needed like some conflict to tie something at the ending. And that was kind of it. When you're talking about the conflict with the, with the different you know, lines of time and stuff, is, is that something you're learning in class, something that's you know, an important part of movies? Yeah, we were talking about like, making storyboards and we realized that every, every story has some sort of conflict, some, something that the hero has to do to get like, I'm not sure how to say it, but something to get right, something to do right. And a, c a couple of times in, in the movie, someone jumps into something and then the camera just does a little move and you see him far away. And there's another time where you're behind the garage and people are coming and was that you guys coming? I mean, where, did you do split screen stuff? Um, so what we had is we had a shot of Miguel in the distance and we just panned to the left really quickly. And since it was so fast of a pan, it was all blurry and we just then did the same move, but with Miguel on the left this time, and cut them together so it looked like one shot. Did you guys know you wanted to use a box? Or were you looking around and saw a box and said, hey, wait a minute, this could be what we're looking for? Actually, we got the prompt, the box, and so me and Miguel were thinking, well, we could get some small shoe boxes or some sort of boxes from the house. And we thought, no, this isn't gonna work, it's not big enough, we need to go inside of it. And so we actually drove down to uh, Sears, and we went to their pickup station and asked if they had any large boxes. And a guy went into the back and came out with this huge one. We're like, this is it. This is the one we're going to use. Andrew, Miguel, thank you very much. Good job, guys. Our next film comes from the Vancouver School of Arts and Academics. And a lot like the box, which we just saw, you can see how much time and effort students put into making this film. <laughs> I start my day the same as any average human being on earth would. I get dressed, brush my teeth, eat toast. It's nothing exciting, nothing special. I wish life would go back to being that way. Average. But for the last 10 years, it's been anything but. Allow me to provide a little context towards my situation. Open your history books to the year 2001. I was eight years old, and there was a toy car I wanted more than anything in the world, including my soul. And from that moment on, the rest of my life was set in stone. My destiny no longer in my hands. I would do whatever the devil wanted while I lived, and when I reached the end of my days, I would burn in hell for eternity. <laughs> Great deal for a toy car. So basically, every few hours or so, Satan gives me a call like this. Big deal, right? The devil's delivery boy. Doesn't sound too bad, huh? But when you've been doing this day after day for 10 years, it begins to take its toll. These errands of his completely consume my life. I have no time for friends, a job, a girlfriend. My grades at school are dropping, and the stress of knowing I'm going to hell when I die is taxing. Not that I'm living much of a life anyway. I've never actually delivered anything directly to the devil. I just leave the results of my errands, in this case his groceries, at his doorstep. And then I just walk away. I've never seen him take the items from the doorstep. I just leave it there, and the next time I come around, it's gone. The only time I've ever seen him at all was when I signed the contract 
and I can barely even remember that now. I still have school to attend, despite being the devil's pet. Part of the contract was that Satan couldn't interfere with me when I was in class, although I have had to make some deliveries during my lunch time. The toughest part at first was my inability to keep friends. When you're eight years old and you have to run a never-ending stream of errands for Satan, people tend to not want to be your friend. Not that they knew the specifics of my situation, but I never had time to hang out with anyone. <laughs> That's Cadence. Interesting name, I know, but she's an interesting girl. A bit of an elementary sweetheart for me, you could say. We have been best friends since, well, since we were born. Our houses were side by side and we played together all the time. After I began to become distant due to my deal, she was the last of my friends to give up on me. But when you have no time to give, you tend to drift away from people. And as Cadence made new friends and I didn't, well, we sort of lost touch. But with time, I became an introvert and realized I was fine on my own. You don't need other people to be happy. <laughs> Not that I'm happy, but I'm, I think I could be. I don't need people, I'm, I'm fine on my own. Hey, Gavin, do you think we could hang out sometime? Uh, yeah, that would be great. Oh, good, uh, ew, that would be nice. Okay, I was thinking that maybe we could go get some coffee, um, and afterwards we could wow. go... Um, she still remembers my name. I didn't think anybody knew who I was, old friend or not. I wonder why she'd want to hang out with me. What if she just feels bad for me? I wouldn't want that. So, seven at your place? Yeah, that, that sounds great. I'm not even sure what she just said. Six, three, five. Three numbers I have never given any amount of thought to once in my life. But right now, they seem quite significant to me. The monotonous routine I have stuck to since my deal was written seems to have been broken. Now that I think about it, the devil hasn't asked for anything at all this afternoon. What do you want? Some pancakes! Not a mix, though! I want them pre-made and packaged! Oh, God, seriously? Hey! Don't bring him into this! Okay, fine. Don't keep me waiting! Bye. Eight, zero, zero. The time I have awoken every day since time began and will continue to awaken as long as I continue to exist. 
Nothing will ever change for me. I will always be a slave to the devil. Any kind of joy in my life will always be unattainable. Unless I do something about it. Unless I take control of my life. It's time to take a stand. I'm gonna go give the devil a piece of my mind. Who are you? I'm Damien. Is Satan home? What? Uh, is Satan home? Who are you? I'm, I'm Gavin. Oh, Gavin. It's been so long, I, I didn't recognize you. Actually, I'm Satan. Or rather, I'm Satan. Are you serious? Yes, I am. I! Ow! But I remember you being so much bigger and having horns. Well, you were eight. Oh my god. Hey, um, do you want to go on a coffee run for me? No. What? But, but you have to. No, I'm not going to do anything for you anymore. But, but you have to. It, it, it's in the contract. <laughs> See? Hey, give that back. Uh, 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 what? What? Uh, uh. Go to hell. Hey, can we at least have a fiddle battle? I'm gonna get my juice on. As I walked away, I felt everything change. A whole world of possibilities opened. I could do whatever I wanted. I was in control of my own destiny. I could sleep in, go running, play sports, reconnect with old friends, even try again with Cadence, if she'd ever want to. But now I can change. I can become my own person and turn everything around. My whole life is in front of me, and gosh dang it, I'm gonna live it. Okay, now another film from students from VSAA. This one is an animation film and it's very clever.
Now remember, you can see all these films and a lot of our full shows online. Go to youtube.com backslash vansdtv. I'm Orion Ludlow. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had a good time. See you again soon.